Hello, everybody. Uh, let's go over some questions from about light and then how it interacts with matter. So in this particular case, I'm going to be looking at an emission spectrum and then uh, we will think about how to calculate the uh, energy of a photon or energy gap between the delivery involved in an emission of a photon uh, using an example from let's say carbon or something like that. Okay, so we have carbon over here. Uh, let me take a quick screenshot. Now we see that uh, we have a lot of emission lines here, meaning uh, carbon is emitting um, at each and every uh, wavelength indicated over here, right? But there are, I mean, it shows us that there are main emission lines. They are given us some values. So what we can do is we can go with them. So uh, we have one, four emission lines. And then uh, if we had a question like below over here, it says determine the delta E for electrons in hydrogen that results in the radiation with the highest frequency. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a similar thing for carbon. Okay, I'm gonna I'll let you guys do deal with hydrogen. So highest frequency means we know the frequency uh, nu is equal to C over lambda, meaning wavelength and frequency are inversely related to each other. Highest frequency means we're gonna have the shortest wavelength in other words. So what we can do is we're gonna pick the line with the shortest wavelength in carbon now, and that's gonna be this guy over here, and that should have the highest frequency, okay? Uh, so that's how we pick the, uh, the photon or the wavelength that we want to deal with. And once we have that, if we calculate the energy of that photon, you know, energy of the photon is given by energy is equal to C over lambda. Using this equation, that energy should match with the energy gap between the two energy levels that is responsible for the emission of this photon. Okay, because photons are emitted when the electron comes down from a high energy level to a low energy level. What they're asking is to calculate the energy gap between this highest, uh, higher energy level and the lower energy level that emitted this particular photon. So if we calculate the photon, that tells us the energy gap between the two energy levels. That's the idea over here. And now, how do we do this? Again, um, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Let me clear these guys for the moment so that I can make some room, okay? Now, the equation we're gonna need is uh, energy is equal to H C over lambda, okay? Here, the H is the Planck's constant and C, um, I can write it. So H is the Planck's constant. Let me write the value. 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joules seconds. And then C is the speed of light, which is about three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. And then lambda, oh, this guy is the wavelength. This is just a reminder about what these uh, uh, parameters are, okay? Now what we're gonna do is the equation and then uh, determine the energy of the photon that has a wavelength of 426.7 nanometers. That's all we're gonna do, okay? So let's do that. Let me pick a different color, maybe. Uh, okay, so let's do that. So energy must be equal to H, which is 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34 seconds. Multiply that by the speed of light, which is three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second and then divide this by the wavelength, which is um, 426.7 nanometers. But here's the thing, we, uh, we have the wavelength in nanometers, but the speed of light is in meters, so they need to match uh, for us to have them in the same equation. So I'm gonna make nanometers meters, convert nanometers to meters, 
by multiplying by 10 to the power of minus 9 because that's how many meters we have in a nanometer. Now, when we do that, we see that nanometers cancel out, meters cancel out, and seconds cancel out. We're going to end up with joules, and this is joules per photon of this wavelength. And if you plug and chuck these numbers, let me have um, let, let me have the numbers separately now. So what we have is if you multiply the numbers in the uh, data, we have three times 6.626. That should be 19.83 uh, eight uh, divided by 426.7 and multiply this by uh, the 10th power of something. Then now we're gonna figure out the exponents uh, of the rest uh, of um, and, uh, for the, of the rest of the equation over here, so we have ten to the power of minus thirty four multiplied by ten to the power of eight. Okay, uh, so if you if we multiply uh, these two guys, we are going to get ten to the power of minus twenty six, and ten to the power of minus twenty six um, divided by ten to the power of minus should be 10 to the power of minus 17. 10 to the power of minus, okay, let me have that in the proper color, 10 to the power of minus 17, and this should be in joules. And then if you calculate uh, the number over here, 19.83, Twenty six point seven is zero point zero four six five times ten to the power of minus seventeen joules, and this is equal to four point six five times ten to the power of minus nineteen joules. Okay, so that should be your answer for discussion. So that's what I would write as the answer for um, if, if this discussion was for uh, uh, this discussion was for carbon. Now, now in this particular question you have here, you had to do that for hydrogen, but you do the same thing, the same uh, exact uh, equation, and you just plug and chuck the numbers for hydrogen. All right. Now, uh, let's, now, if you go to the second question over here, it says energy of a mole of photons, okay? I determine the energy in kilojoules per mole of the highest frequency radiation emitted by boron in the visible region of uh, the electromagnetic radiation, okay? Uh, you know what, let's, for, I mean, just first practice that we can do exactly boron. Let me get that value by going over to. I can. All right, here we go. Let's go over here, and then here's boron spectrum. And then what they ask us to do is the highest frequency radiation. So the highest frequency for the rad uh, highest frequency radiation uh, should have the uh, shortest wavelength. And that must be for 49.8 nanometers. So let's do that and see how things go. All right, let's take a screenshot. Uh, now, again, we're talking about the energy of the photon. Energy of the photon is always given by uh, this equation over here, which we dealt with before, energy is equal to hc over lambda. And if you plug and chuck the numbers again, we have 6.626 times to the power of minus, which is the Planck's constant, or h joules seconds, multiplied by c, which is the speed of light, 3 times to the power of 8 meters per second, and then divided by the wavelength, which is, in this case, 449.8 nanometers. Again, we need to convert nanometers to meters. To do that, we're going to multiply by 10 to the power of minus 9. 
that because that's how many meters we have in a nanometer. Okay, so we cancel meters, we cancel out meters, we cancel out seconds, we're gonna end up with joules. So if we quickly calculate this value, uh, energy is gonna be, again, uh, three times 6.626 is uh, 19 point, um, eight three eight and divide this by four forty nine point eight multiplied by if you do the uh, uh the exponents of 10 now uh minus 30 10 to the power of minus 34 times 10 to the power of 8 is 10 to the power of minus 26 10 to the power of minus 26 divided by 10 to the power of minus 9 is 10 to the power of minus 17 and okay, so this should be in joules and once you have this number now the question is asking you to calculate energy of uh, energy of uh, one mole of photon in kilojoules per mole okay that means we need to multiply this is the energy of one photon to get the energy of one mole of photon we need to multiply this number this number by the our Gardner's number because that's how many photons we have in a mole of photon which is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 per mole. And then also we need the answer in, um, in kilojoules. Therefore, we need to divide by 1,000 because that's how many joules we have in a kilojoule. So when you do that, you see that the joules cancel out. You're gonna get your answer in uh, kilojoules per mole. Okay. Um, so if you do this calculation, uh, let's see. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the numbers on one side. Nine point eight three eight divided by four four nine point eight by six point zero two two divided by oh, that's it. 0.022, and then the expo ten, exponents of 10 should be uh, 10 to the power of minus 17 times in the power of 23 should be 10 to the power of 6. And then 10 to the power of 6 divided by 1000 or 10 to the power of 3 should be 10 to the power of 3. So we have 10 to the power of 3 over here. And then if you deal with the numbers, we are going to get uh, 19.838, 0.022, and then divide that by 449.8. So you'll get uh, 0.265. That's a six uh, times 10 to the power of three kilojoules per mole. In other words, this should be 265.6 kilojoules per mole. And that should be your answer for that question in kilojoules per mole. All right, I think that's how we calculate the energy of photons and then I'm gonna stop right here. Um, and I'll see you guys later in class. Bye everybody.